Black Panther is one of the most famous superheroes in the world, and he is of course the ruler of the country of Wakanda. He is extremely wealthy and he is in peak physical condition, all of which means he has no problem with the ladies. Although he hasn't actually been with as many women as you'd think, as his character prefers relationships to one night stands, but this video is going to go over his past lovers. Now, the Black Panther is a unisex title passed down to the ruler of Wakanda, but the Black Panther we're talking about in this video is named T'Challa. Now, when T'Challa was younger, he studied abroad in America. He was studying there, in part, to give him greater perspective of the world, which it did, though not always in a positive way. While studying at college, he started dating Nikki Adams, who was white, and he, of course, was black and another black man studying at the college, Kamal Rakim, didn't like the fact that he was dating a white girl, and so he decided to attack T'Challa. Now, being the Black Panther, he was easily able to defeat him and his gang of friends, but it did kind of end the romance. Later, Nikki actually started dating Everett Ross, who was the US expert on Wakanda, and played by Martin Freeman in the live-action movies. Since T'Challa and Nikki dated while adults, they were, of course, lovers. Now, next we have Malaika. Malaika was from Wakanda and is a former lover of the Black Panthers, though she now lives in Paris, France. Not a lot of information was ever given on her character, she only featured in three comic issues, and her love story with T'Challa happened pretty much entirely off panel, meaning we know they were lovers and then they stopped being lovers, but we have little to no knowledge of why. Next we travel to the alternate universe, Marvel Zombie Universe. Now in the Marvel zombie universe, pretty much all the world's heroes have been turned into zombies, and they have eaten the whole human race. Except for a dozen or so humans who live off-world on Magneto's asteroid M, though Magneto himself has also been eaten by the zombies. But one of the few heroes not turned into a zombie is Black Panther. Instead, he is abducted and kept sedated by Giant Man, who keeps him alive so he can saw pieces of him off and eat them to ease his hunger and clear his head so he can think clearly as the hunger is so consuming for the zombies that they can't think straight unless their stomachs are full. It's pretty messed up, but I do actually recommend reading it, as it's a pretty well-written graphic novel. Anyway, Black Panther has a few pieces cut off of him, namely a large part of his right arm and his right leg, but he manages to escape with the help of a decapitated zombie wasp, and he finds the last human survivors who are on a visit from their asteroid. He joins their ranks on the asteroid, and eventually marries and has a son with Lisa Hendricks. Now, back in the normal Marvel Universe, we have his second biggest love, Monica Lynn. Monica Lynn was a singer who was abducted by the organization The Sons of the Serpent and rescued by Black Panther. The whole story arc revolved around racists trying to create fear and start a black-on-white war in America. Bear in mind that this comic was written in a very different time when racism was completely different to how it is now. Now, T'Challa told Monica that underneath the mask, he was a soul brother, his words, meaning he was black. And since she then sees him as an ally, the two managed to work together with the Avengers to bring down the Serpent Sons organization. Later, they bonded over their political views and they started dating. And they have one hell of a good story to tell when the two are asked how they met. They were at one point engaged, but the wedding was called off for reasons that we never found out. Years later, in the Black Panther Volume 4, when T'Challa was searching for a queen, he proposed to her again, but she turned him down, saying that when they dated, she'd been kidnapped twice, and he always had someone trying to murder him. She didn't want to live or raise kids in that kind of violent lifestyle, which is fair enough, and is probably why the wedding was called off before. But Monica also knew that T'Challa only had eyes for one woman, Aurora Monroe also known as Storm of the X-Men, and she is undoubtedly T'Challa's most important lover. They met when they were teenagers, when he was on his walkabout across Africa, and she was a street thief, and the two fell instantly in love, most likely taking each other's virginity. Unfortunately, it wasn't to last, as T'Challa left her as he felt that she was a distraction. He knew he would never have peace until he found the man who killed his father. Now that sounds harsh, and it was, but when he was a small child, he had witnessed his father's murder firsthand, and he was consumed with revenge. And all he wanted was to get his father's killer, Ulysses Claw, played by Andy Serkis in the live-action movies. So years later, after T'Challa got the vengeance he so desperately wanted, That is for my father. 
He was then free to pursue Storm, who still loved him as he still loved her, and he proposed to her. She had her reservations at first, but couldn't deny the fact that she was still in love with him, and eventually she said yes and the two were married. This marriage had many difficulties, including some spousal abuse at times, but the biggest problem it faced was in the Avengers vs X-Men comic event. Uh, for those who haven't read this, it's pretty much what it sounds like. The X-Men get given godlike powers by the Phoenix Force, and then they basically go to war against the Avengers. It does have more nuances to it than that, but that's the broad spectrum of it. Anyway, at one point, Namor attacks Wakanda, a country that's never been invaded by anyone, and using his new godlike powers, he pretty much destroys the place. And this, of course, causes tension between T'Challa and Storm, as Storm is one of the X-Men. Now, she had nothing to do with this. In fact, none of the X-Men did. Namor went off on his own. But T'Challa still can't get past this, and so he has their marriage and old. After this, the relationship is best described as complicated. It seems like they're still friends, and may occasionally even have friends with benefits, as though there is some love there, but something is stopping them from getting together as a couple and being married officially. Now, people say that the real reason for this breakup is because in the real world, Marvel owned the rights to Black Panther, and Fox owned the rights to Storm, meaning in the movies, the two characters could never meet. But since Disney now own Marvel, and they have just bought Fox as well, it seems like it's now possible for the two to actually have a romance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So this could mean that they could get together in the comics again, assuming this is the actual reason they're separated, and it wasn't just the writer's idea in the first place. But we'll have to wait and see whether it will ever happen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, though hopefully it will. And that is everyone that Black Panther has currently slept with, not including the live-action Marvel Universe, as when I'm making this video, the first Black Panther film hasn't been released, and I'm sure he'll end up with someone as the films go on. Is there anyone that you think was missed? And who would you most like to see Black Panther get with in the live-action movies and in the future comics? Be sure to let us know in the comments, and I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into short animated films. If you're interested in donating or just want to find out more, a link is in this video's description. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.